If a Tea Party, we have to, let's say, be more astute in using the mass medias in organizing our, let's say, email lists so that everybody is informed and providing information, video in some cases, uh, passing on information from American Majority and some of the other organizations that we're associated with, and uh, in reality, uh, becoming a more effective force here in this area and projected out statewide uh, to uh, uh, get more information to you folks so that you can pass it on to your associates so that we get more people actually involved in political action and certainly long term more people interested in let's say running for office so without further ado I would like to introduce you to Jamie uh, Cox Jamie I think uh, had a few remarks last meeting uh, she's with American Majority. American Majority can be very helpful to our organization in generating information that will be helpful to you through our channels. We will get that information to you, especially with uh, you know legislative alerts, uh, trying to get the information to our legislators, legislators as to you know what they hope they will do when they cast their votes. In the different offices that they hold. <coughs> Jamie, well, please come. Hi, everyone. Um, I want to ask everyone here who is not running for office if you're going to help your people that are running for office to raise your hand. You have, to, if, if you can even comprehend the amount of thought and stress that goes into choosing to run for office and what these people are up against, if you cannot help them, shame on you. <laughs> um, that's, the, that's really one of the most important things. Um, I'm with American Majority, and American Majority is partnering with Commonwealth Foundation and media trackers here in Pennsylvania. There's some legislation in Pennsylvania that they're going to work very hard to get passed that will have a huge impact on the state and how the state is run and how campaigns are financed. If you notice that things seem to be sort of changing politically, there are a lot of groups coming in. I'm sure you're aware of Freedom Works and Americans for Prosperity. A lot of that changed with the McCain-Feingold bill, and it allowed other groups, PACs, to form and to donate money and to have an impact on uh, everything across the political spectrum. That's American Majority is doing. American Majority's thrust here in Pennsylvania is education and training. So we offer training law campaigns, how to run a campaign, how to Twitter, how to do things on Facebook. It's across the gamut. If you check the website, AmericanMajority.org, if you click at the top, it says resources. There's lots and lots of resources that will help with lots of things. But one of the main things you need is volunteers. In Pennsylvania specifically, and, and American Majority is just looking at Pennsylvania, um, what they really one of the things that Commonwealth did was they went out and met with the people who made things happen in Wisconsin, in Michigan, and in Indiana, where they got right to work pass. And I read just last week or so, Wisconsin went from, I don't know how many millions of dollars they were in debt, but they are now running a surplus. And the, large, the third largest teachers union actually had to decertify. So when you give people the choice of being in the union or not, they choose to not be in the union. Um, union members vote 50-50, Democrat or Republican, so to make people pay money, and 30% of their dues actually end up in some sort of political action, whether it's get out the vote or actual donations. It's a fairly staggering amount of money that they have no control over. So in Pennsylvania, they're looking for liquor privatization, which you, there was quite a bit of hoopla over last, last spring over that, and it went through very quickly. And one of the reasons it did is because they were fairly organized around social media. And if you were paying attention on Twitter or Facebook, what was going on there was actually pretty fascinating. Um, so we're looking at liquor privatization. They're really pushing pay paycheck protection. And paycheck protection right now had, last they heard about a month and a half ago, had more than 100 signatures on it. 
and it actually was in committee, and they're, they're being careful as to actually who gets it in their committee because they want the bill to move out of the committee. So there's people who are have a lot of finesse in understanding the power plays and, and who will push to get it out. Governor Corbett has said that he would sign it if we can get it out of committee and get it through the House, that he would sign um, paycheck protection. And what that does is it, it allows the school boards and a lot of the other um, government union jobs to not collect union dues. Because right now, we just, our, we just went through a contract negotiation, and for the first time ever, they got um, rights. Uh, what's it called? <coughs> Fair share. So they're making, there was about 150 teachers who, who weren't in the union that are now paying into the union. And it's about $900. For that, so if you multiply that by 150, that's just my little school district. That's a lot of money. And what the district does is they collect the money and they write the check to the union. We'd really like to stop that. Um, the legislate legislators in Pennsylvania right now, the problem is uh, many of the Republicans that are here on the east side. They come from fairly strongly Republican districts, and they're elected as Republicans, and they take a lot of union money, and they're not passing those things, which would have a huge impact on how much it takes to run a race. Because when the NEA comes in and runs against you, they have a lot of money, and we don't have that kind of money. And taxpayers, if you could form a taxpayer union, that would make a big difference, but that's just almost impossible. But if you can cut the money off, the whole game kind of changes, and it makes it a, a doable thing. Um, in Pennsylvania specifically, American majority and Tea Parties around the state are now organizing. So there are people who are very familiar with Harrisburg and very familiar with the politicians who, when the legislation comes up, they're going to want to move the legislation really fast because they do not want to happen in Pennsylvania what happened in Wisconsin. Um, Wisconsin went through a knockdown, drag out fight. Uh, their capital actually was trashed. There was a lot of damage done to their capital. They had to replace a lot of the floors. The floors were cracked, the <coughs> floors. So in Pennsylvania, we want to avoid that. We want to do more like what Michigan did. So the, I'm, I know people who are meeting with, actually they're meeting with donors who are now trying to put pressure, large donors who are putting pressure on the legislators to say, you know, we really need this pass. If you can't get this passed, I might not be able to donate to your campaign next time. So the people who have put the plan together, and a lot of it is the Commonwealth, have really thought out the pieces that you need, and they've met with people around the country to see how it's been done. So if you're interested in getting involved with that program, you can see me. I'd like somebody within this group that would take that on, where they would get the information from um, pretty much the Commonwealth and Citizens Alliance, where they would get that information and you'd pass it out to your group. Because they need people to act within a, a short period of time. Because when the legislation comes up, and this is what they did with liquor privatization. When the legislation comes up, they pushed it and they got it passed. Liquor privatization passed within a week. And it, and it wasn't even on the docket two or three weeks earlier than that. There was no movement on that bill at all. There was no will to get it passed, is what we were told. And we did get that passed. Now we're waiting on the Senate to do something, so that's the next step. Um, American Majority is going to be holding a training in October. We have Alan West coming in for a dinner on October the 11th. That's a Friday night, and then we're going training all day the next day on Saturday. It'll be down in Westchester. It's a bit of a drive, but um, we have some reasonable hotel rooms and things like that, so we'd like to invite all of you to come. But does, does anyone have any <coughs> questions? I need some questions. Yes? Uh, about that liquor prioritization. Yes. Um, you know, great, I applaud that we privatized, but from what I read, they were just going to allow the current beer distributors to have that prioritization. So to me, then how is that helping the population? Because that seems like it would be monopolistic. Well, one of the things is actually they're, what they're looking at is mainly the unions. And the, the uh, liquor privatization was actually 
move all those people that are in the union outside of the union. And that's a, a fairly large um, state union, the liquor, the liquor privatization. The people who work for the liquor stores. What I understood that what they passed was that yeah. more private citizens could say, hey, we want to apply for program shop and sell. Right. It was already only going to those who already had a beer distributor. Mm -hmm. It's not a good bill. And so the choice has to be made whether you're for whether you want to wait and have a great bill or to get, get that ball rolling and to make a difference there. And that's a huge debate. That's a huge debate. In that bill also, they're going to be regulating candle shops that have candles that smell like liquor. That's what's going on. Sorry, Gus. Yes, um, in the situation in Wisconsin, the um, where, where they were able to get to stop the teachers doing it, did um, that start at a grassroots level before Governor Walker? That's a great question. Um, what happened in Wisconsin about 10 years ago, media trackers and a group like the Commonwealth Foundation, and there were some other groups that got together, they, they came into Wisconsin about 10 years ago and they worked with grassroots groups. That's why this model is being implemented in Pennsylvania, because it's been tried. Pennsylvania is a lot farther down that path. They don't think it'll take 10 years to get it done. Um, so repeat your question again. Well, I was, I was just curious because I wanted to see how we can start this in Pennsylvania. So my question was, in Wisconsin, um, I guess we, I basically started to take notice to this is when I saw the situation with Governor uh, Walker. So I didn't really know if there was if this had been taking place years ahead of time to exactly. help him to get to that point. He was actually the end of a lot of work. He was not the beginning of the work. So they had been working on educating the public for a long time and going out and making small changes in local elections that bring attention to that, which is what you guys are doing with the school board. You don't realize how important school board elections are. Um, they impact a large voter base, a larger voter base than uh, supervisors or things like that. And they're more in the public eye because of the, the children, because of the schools. And people want good schools. So they have a greater, they do have a greater impact. And with Walker, they worked with him for a while, you know, to get him elected. I can't remember what his history was before he, I think he was the supervisor or like the county commissioner is, is actually what his history was. So one of the things the American majority is very interested in doing is to help people <coughs> run and to get people to run for the campaign. Well, so. just to add to that, as a school board director, um, we do negotiate the teachers' contracts, and that particular item can be negotiated out, the collection of union yes. It can be. Yes. Most people don't realize that. And so that's uh, what I can say to you is please, please pay attention to who you're voting for on the school board. We affect more of your life than you think. Yeah. School boards have nine nine people usually on the board, and they're the ones that have the control over most of the taxes that they pay. So it's, and it's usually one vote on the school board that, that makes a difference. It's usually a 5-4 vote. And with these next contract negotiations, they will be committing you to another four years of three, four-year contracts. Six. Six, Six. years. That's huge. Yeah. And have you negotiated on the, uh, do you know if they're negotiating on the benefits or anything like that? Yeah, one of, one of the challenges is, and I was just applauding the uh, Pocono or Mountain School Board because they have an immediate, there's actually contract negotiations going on. There is no mention in, your district in our area about any contract yeah. negotiations. Yeah. So uh, the honest answer is I don't know. Okay. Um, that should be public, by the way. It should be. And the reason why Pocono Mountain is in the news is because the teachers have announced that they will strike on the 2nd of January. So that's how it got into the news. Okay. But if you look long term with contract negotiations, and like if you have a 2% increase over a certain period of time, it's a huge amount of money in four, five, six years. Five percent? Yeah. <laughs> that's why, that's why, that's why the NIH uh, yeah, comes up with Stroudsburg is the example for all the other. See, the yeah. other school districts, they start out on 41 8. Our teachers start out at 51 8. Okay. Wow. wow. 
That's why we need to get the word out. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, just yes. one more thing. I'm sorry. Just to okay. hear, uh, Mr. Hazel did announce at Pokemon Mountain also has somebody running for school board. Um, his name is Lee Stelzer. And currently we have a 5-4 majority on that board. And we were able to do the things uh, that I spoke about when I announced that I was running for 150 because for the first time we took over that board. But we're in a situation is, is if it could change. So what we did in two years can easily be reversed. <coughs> so, yeah, it's big. Um, I'll send out some emails. There is some information on teachers' unions and things like that. There's articles that are being written. If you go to Media Trackers, Pennsylvania, look them up. They're starting to publish some of the numbers. Um, there's also Free to Teach. Free to Teach is uh, supported by Commonwealth. And they're working with teachers around the state who are willing to speak up and speak out. Uh, they had a big, I think they had a big rally in Philadelphia. Philadelphia is just the home of the world. And one of their spokesmen did speak out, and they're doing some publicity. So I'll get you that information, and I'll get it to Greer, and I'll send it to you, Jackie, so that you can get it out. If anybody else would give me their email, I'll be happy to send it to them. But that information is starting to get out there, and if you start pushing it, then more and more people read it and find out, and I think it, it could be very helpful. Yes? But for the record, <coughs> Walker was mayor of Milwaukee before okay. we came down there. Okay. Yes, thanks. All right, thank you very much.